Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Marston for the Euchre Media YouTube channel, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to be making an expression rig which creates an effect that imitates the rack focus of a camera lens. Good. Good, good, good. First, we'll set up the project, then we'll create the expression rig itself, and lastly, we'll give it a final polish by adjusting the keyframes and adding sound effects. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and let me show you what we're gonna be making. I'll make this full screen. So we have this fake camera rack focus going on with a, which is controlled by a single slider on the control layer, and it's procedural. So if we were to add a different image into this image pre-comp like this one, Control Shift Alt H will make it full width. Then with the new image, why isn't that? Oh, all right, okay, it's not on the first frame. So home, left bracket, will send the layer to the first frame. Now with our new image, it has the same treatment. And there you go. And if you're wondering who this guy is, uh, I used him on purpose so I could plug his channel, which I'm a fan of. Manual does motion. It's this guy. Uh, he makes fantastic motion design and After Effects tutorials, all project-based. You learn so much just watching one of his videos, so I highly recommend that if you're not subscribed, you go subscribe to Manual Does Motion. All right, so let's go ahead and make our project. So I have already done some setup ahead of time, so we can just dig right into the meat and potatoes of this tutorial. So let me go through what all is in this composition. We have the background image, then on top of that some floating smaller particles, and then next is our darkening and vignette elements for after that rack focus. And then we have our larger particles in the foreground as well as the text. And then on top of everything is a control layer with one, two, well, huh, it says it, um, with six sliders, which we're gonna use as we create the rig. And if you're wondering how these particles are made, um, these are just stock footage, which I got from Action VFX, uh, which I highly recommend, 2K, 4K clips, ProRes, even RED and a lot of them are rendered with the alpha already in in the file so you can just drag and drop onto your timeline highly recommend it i think so action vfx there's action vfx and also they have creator vault and i think the difference is that action vfx is for like action film compositing and creator vault just has other compositing elements like this spreading ink mats which looks quite nice anyway so that's where i got the stock footage and so now that we're set up, we can start making our rig. So let's start with the blur uh, that happens when you pull focus. On the background image layer, I'm gonna add a fast box blur and check repeat edge pixels, which I actually think that button should be checked by default, Adobe, if you're listening, um, probably not. Maybe that's just my own thing, but that button should be checked by default. Anyway, on the um, on the top layer, our control layer, I'm gonna rename our top two sliders. The fir first one is gonna be focus and then image max blur. And I'm gonna set the max blur to 20. And then I'm gonna set a keyframe on the focus slider at zero and then hit U on our keyboard to reveal our keyframes and then shift page down to move 10 frames into the future. And I'm gonna set the value of that focus slider to 100. So now our focus slider animates from zero to 100. And I'm gonna lock that effect control panel so we can still access it. And I'm gonna hit E on my keyboard to reveal our fast box blur and alt click on the stopwatch of the blur radius so we can write an expression. And our first line will be a variable. I'm calling it source. And I'm gonna pick whip to the focus slider we just uh, we just named and then the next variable on the next line is going to be max blur and I'm going to pick up to our image max blur slider and with these two uh, Variables declared we're ready to write a linear expression and linear expressions They just convert one value to another based on an input. So what value are we going to convert? We're going to convert our focus slider, which is our source variable. So as that goes from zero to 100, we want our image to blur from zero to our maximum blur value, our max blur slider. Great, so now if I hit enter, we can see that that image is going out of focus as our slider reaches 100. This is great. Now we can actually just copy this onto those smaller particles that are also part of the background. 
and they will do the same thing. You can see here they are in focus and then they slide out of focus. And they're actually so small that they become nearly invisible, but that's fine. Great, so now we have our background going out of focus, the particles and the image. So we can actually copy that Fastbox blur with the expression on it onto our text layer. And then under the expression we just wrote, we can just flip these last two output values. So instead of going from zero to our maximum blur, we want it to go from our maximum blur to zero. And now we can see that as our background goes out of focus, then that text goes into focus. And now we can copy that, that uh, Fastbox blur on the text layer onto our bigger particles, which we also want to start out of focus and come into focus. And if I solo that, you can see what's happening. And great, so we are really getting there quickly. The next thing we want to do is that scale that happens. We don't want, we don't want manual here. That scale, you can see as the camera pull happens, the background scales a little bit and the text scales on. So to do that, we do something very similar. I'm going to reveal the scale property of our uh, background layer and alt click on the stopwatch and declare the same source variable. But actually what we need to do before that is name these sliders. I'm going to say image max scale. I'm going to set that to 75, which I figured out ahead of time. And then image min scale which I figured out was 72. And now on that expression, we can declare some variables. min s for minimum scale, pick up to that minimum scale value. And max s for maximum scale, pick up to that maximum scale variable. And then uh, with that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit tilde so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna create some space here and then I'm going to write a very similar linear expression. So as our source goes from 0 to 100, then we want our scale to go from our minimum scale value of that slider on the control layer to the maximum scale value. Now, this won't work as is because scale needs two properties in an array. So we're going to make this linear expression a variable called s for scale. And then our final output will be an array of scale, comma, scale. So now you can see that as our focus slider changes, then the scale of our background image also changes. And with this in place, I can go ahead and right click on that scale, say copy expression only. And then on the uh, text layer, I'm gonna paste so that now that expression is applied to that scale. And there's a couple things I wanna change. I'm gonna rename our fifth slider to text min scale. And I'm gonna set that to 90 because I don't want our text to scale the same size as our background layer. And under that expression now, we just need to modify a few things. I'm gonna delete our max s, our max scale variable. And then for our min s variable, I'm gonna pick whip to that text min scale slider. And then under our linear expression, instead of going from our minimum, instead of going to our maximum scale, I wanna to go to 100. Great. So just a little different. Great, so the only things that are left, I believe, are the opacities, which is super simple. So under that text layer, which is gonna fade in, we just pick whip our opacity to that focus scale slider. So now that comes on. And then same, we can actually just copy this expression and we're gonna put that on the particles, the vignette, and the darken layer. And so now our rack focus rig is complete and there's just a few finishing touches that I want to do. So now our rack focus expression rig is complete um, and it looks pretty good, but I think that we can sell this effect a little bit better by playing with the timing and spacing of these focus slider keyframes. So I have already figured out the timing of the keyframes ahead of time. Uh, so I'm just going to go through those with you. I'm going to take the second keyframe and move it backward in time five frames with alt left arrow key, one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to copy that keyframe and then move forward six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to go four frames, one, two, three, four, and paste it again. And then one, two, three more frames and paste it one more time. And then on that second to last keyframe, I'm going to bring that value down to 50. So it kind of comes out of focus like you're trying to like you're trying to find the focus. 
Perfect. So now let's just go ahead and select those keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. And then Shift F3 to access the graph editor. So I want that first camera move to happen just a little bit quicker up front in the animation and then ease to a stop. So I'm going to pull on this handle here. And you know what? I actually want that on both of these as well. So I select both of them. And then with this handle, you can see that it is impacting both of the handles of the selected keyframes. Perfect. So I think that is pretty good. It's good enough. And then the last bit is just to add sound effects. So my go-to tool for adding sound effects is an extension called Boombox by Mount Mograph. Uh, it just it comes with a fantastic library of sounds that you can add to your projects. And the one that I'm after is called Servo. Let me take a second here. Is that it? I'll probably use both of these. Okay, so I'm gonna hit plus to add it to my timeline and then I'm gonna drag it so that that marker lines up with the beginning of the animation. And I think I want that to happen just one frame. Yeah, one frame sooner. Yeah, and then I'm gonna add servo two. I'm gonna have that start at the beginning of the next animation, maybe one frame ahead. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to shorten this up with the stretch tool, stretch column of our timeline so it happens a little quicker. Sounds a little different. And then I'm just going to duplicate this second servo, time, time reverse layer, drag it out. That's pretty good. Not perfect, maybe. I'm sure a sound designer would be way better at this than me. But yeah, great. So with that, our project is complete. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you can see how the principles in this tutorial can be applied in many other applications. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. And of course, hit the like button on this video so that YouTube knows to spread it to the entire internet. All right, thanks. Have a good day.